Hi everyone, welcome back for the official start of the Let's Play of the Path. Now, once again, I have to repeat, viewer discretion advised. If you are easily creeped out and easily get nightmares, don't watch. That's all I'm going to say. So, with that out of the way, I think I will let you guys know that I will be playing through these girls from the youngest girl to the oldest girl. That means that we will start with nine-year-old Robin, then move on to eleven-year-old Rose, then thirteen-year-old Ginger, fifteen-year-old Ruby, seventeen-year-old Carmen, and nineteen-year-old Scarlet. So, and there's no real reason to play through them from youngest to oldest. I just figured it was a uh, nice orderly way of going through a non-orderly path. Insert some form of order into this. But if you see Robin right now, she's sitting there playing with a little toy car. Just having fun. Being a little kid. Because that's what she is. But without any further ado... We select Robin, and we will be on our way. When we start, I will explain a little bit about what there is of a user interface. <laughs> Excuse me, goodness. Yeah. My nose is getting stuffy. This will be my second attempt at recording this. The first one looked really, really bad. My codec could not handle the game. You know, it really pixelated and blurry. But Tale of Tales presents the path. You hear the bus. Hopefully it's not too loud. by Aria Harvey and Michael Salmon. Salmon. Samin. Mikhail. Mikhail, I think. Mikhail Samin. Something like that. I'm not really good with foreign names. Robin may take off bolting in her bright red coat, but go to Grandmother's house and stay on the path. We could do that. That isn't what the game's really about. The game is about exploration. And right now, you notice it's giving us some controls at the bottom. It says we can move left and right, or swing the camera left and right. We can move in the direction the camera's pointing. And, oh, she found a bird. You may or may not have noticed it. But there was a small shadow of a bird, a very, well, large shadow of a bird overlaid, just very, very briefly. That appears whenever your girl can interact with something. I can explain as I walk. Whoa. Sometimes when you start walking, the camera gets that blur effect. Makes it difficult to see. And that, well, you saw more bird. She can't grab the bird, but, you know, what you gonna do? But we can still see the path from here. But once we get deep enough into the forest, the path will go away. I may eventually show you what happens if you go down Grandmother's path, but first... Or just go straight down the path. But first... How about... I still see the path, or is that the flower field now? Nope, that's still the path. Okay. It hasn't gone away. Yeah, there is a... I'm getting stuck on trees. I'm running, get out of there. Yeah, we can run. Running, though, makes all the items in the game impossible to see, because you're sprinting past them. And you'll see what I mean when I come across a few. I'll show you. 
But, uh, yeah. Notice how once she's in the forest, her coat has kind of gone white. There's the girl I'm looking for. You just barely see her off in the distance dancing around. But, uh, a few things you should note. A, you see those kind of white curly lines. Those white chalk mark looking curly lines on the very edge of the screen. Right now they're at the top edge just to the almost directly above Robin there. Those represent where in the forest, which direction in the forest you have to go to meet her. The girl in white. The girl in white is kind of an omnipresent character. And for now, let's go ahead and interact with her. It said let go to interact. Sometimes you have to actually uh, hit enter to get the to get your girl to interact with the girl in white. That music, yeesh. But the girl in white is there to do several things for you. The most notable, the well, the most easily noticed, not notable, most easily noticed is that she takes you back to the path. Which, otherwise, that path is gone. And then once you get there, she gives your character a nice reassuring hug. And plays with you a little bit. But for now, we will go back. Another thing you may notice... Aw, she came up and grabbed my hand. That's nice. We're still on the path, though. You don't have to, you know. Lego. Another thing you may have noticed, now that I got... Go away. I don't need you now. Another thing you may have noticed, now that I can say it, is the black scratch marks that appear along, the si along another part of the screen. Those indicate the direction of the character's wolf. And what the wolf is varies from playthrough to playthrough. But in our case, in Robin's case, it's, you know, cut and dry what the wolf actually is. You will see what the wolf is. Pretty blatant. Well, you'll see what the wolf is in every case, but in uh, Robin's case, it's... If you grab the inferences from the items you find, then you'll understand a bit more. Wolf straight ahead of me already? Well, I guess. But, um. Do, 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 do. Run, run, run. There is another, uh. No, that I'm. And my thoughts are all over the place. This is a bad time for me to LP. My thoughts are kind of all over the place. There is another reason the girl in white hangs around the forest. The items you can interact with, for whatever reason, the girl in white seems to home in on them just a little bit. If you wander around in the forest long enough... Oh, here's a couple of things. That is interacting with an item. Those little flowers scattered all over the forest. Yeah, there are 144 of them. And now that I have a second here... She found a treasure chest. I can buy all the toys in the world with this treasure. 
And now that we've picked up an item, if you notice, and that, and uh, hovering over it brings up a picture of a table with some, with a stack of cash under it. And the wine and the bread both bring up pictures of grandmother's house. That is, whenever the girl thinks of it, that is what she, that's what that item brings to mind.